Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to be talking about momentum. Uh, the equation for momentum is this, P equals M times V. Or, if we were to write that out, momentum, which is P, is equal to mass, and we always measure mass in kilograms, so it's mass times velocity. And we have to measure velocity in meters per second. So momentum is simply the product of mass times velocity. So let's say an object has no mass. What is its momentum? Right answer would be zero. Let's say an object has no velocity. What would its momentum be? Right answer would be zero. And so that's a pretty easy one. We'll do a question in just a second. And so this is a famous application of that. This is a train that was coming into a train station in Paris. And the brakeman was trying to save a little bit of time and so didn't pull on the brake soon enough. And that train had so much momentum, it had so much mass, that it just kept going and going. It went through a giant wall and then crashed off this terrace. Surprisingly, nobody was killed in this accident except a woman who happened to be sitting right uh, below. But that's momentum. So what are some typical problems that you might get uh, as far as momentum goes? This would be a typical one. This is the first car that I ever had. This is a 1981 Honda Civic. And so let's say Mr. Anderson's 1981 Honda Civic has a mass of 1,200 kilograms and a top speed of 38.6 meters per second. Calculate the maximum momentum of this car. Well, um, first thing we have to do is write out the equation. So remember, P equals M times V. In this case, momentum then equals the mass, and so the mass in this case is 1,200 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that times the velocity, and the velocity is 38.6 meters per second. Now we want to make sure that the mass is in kilograms and that the uh, velocity is in meters per second. If it isn't, you're going to have to convert it to that. And then we simply multiply those two values. And if I multiply those two values together on my calculator, I get uh, 46,320 kilogram meters per second. That's the units for momentum. Now the next thing you want to do is look back and check your significant digits. If we look at 1200 kilograms, that's going to have two significant digits. If we look at 38.6, that's going to have three significant digits. And so my answer can only have two. And so the way I would write this is momentum equals 4.6 times 10 to the fourth kilogram meters per second. So that'd be the right answer and the correct number of significant digits. Remember though, if that Civic isn't moving, then it would have a momentum of zero. And so you could have an object that's much smaller than that. In other words, if that car was going at that speed and I were to throw an object that has a mass much smaller than that straight at it with an incredible velocity, I could actually stop it uh, if those momentums were to match. So that's what momentum is. Next thing you should understand is that momentum is consistent. Served. Now, one of my favorite toys as a physics teacher was this. It's called Newton's Cradle. And I don't have mine right here, but what you can do is you can lift up one ball and that'll hit the balls and the other ones will go flying up on the, on the other side. I don't have an actual one today, but I do have a virtual Newton's Cradle right here. And so what I can do is I can lift up on this ball on this side. Oh, there's a slight pause there. But what happens is the balls on the other side are going to move up. And so what's happening to the momentum? The momentum is just moving back and forth and back and forth. Now to get one of these work, it actually is pretty hard. You have to make sure that all the balls have the exact same mass, and you have to make sure that they're all the same height. Let me try to grab that for a second. Ooh. So uh, next thing I could do is lift up two. And so if I have two balls now, I've doubled my mass. It's going to have the same velocity, so when I let it down, that momentum is going to be transferred back and forth again. So that's cool. Uh, the one thing you want to play with as you do this is then what happens with three? So if I lift three up like this, let me get those stopped for a second. Mm, there we go. Okay. If I lift three up on this side, what's going to happen there? Well, the momentum is going to be the same. And so how am I going to get three balls to go up on the other side? Well, let's just try it. Ah, so what happens is two will maintain uh, their position and then that momentum is transferred back and forth. And so momentum, remember, is conserved in any kind of a collision. So 
Um, solving problems with one object is really easy, and, and so is solving problems with uh, two objects. And so let's say we have object one now and object two, and object one is an eight ball. And so let's say this is before the collision. And so we can figure out its momentum. We'll call that mass one times velocity one plus mass two, this is the cue ball now, times the velocity two. And so the momentum of this ball plus this ball before the collision is going to equal the same after the collision. And so this would be mass one, its mass isn't gonna change, times its velocity after the collision, plus mass two times its velocity after the collision. And so if we say that this is a collision where object two strikes object one and object two remains stationary, in other words, if it doesn't move. So how would we solve this? Well, if you think about it, let's do this, we'll call this case one, where the cue ball just stops. And so in case one, what's its velocity before the collision? Let's call that zero. And what's the mass of the cue ball before the collision? Well, let's add some numbers to it. Let's say that a typical uh, cue ball has a mass of 0.2 kilograms. And to make this easy, let's say it's going six meters per second. And so we could take uh, its mass and velocity before the collision, so that'd be mass of 0.2 times six meters per second. And so its momentum before the collision would be 1.2 kilograms meters per second. And so after the collision, let's say that this cue ball starts moving now, and this one stays stationary. So we'd say, well, its momentum is gonna be zero now, and so all of that momentum is gonna be transferred to the other, ob other object. And so as long as this, this eight ball, and I think they all have the same mass, has a mass of 0.2 kilograms, then it's gonna move with the same velocity. And so it's going to be a velocity of six uh, meters per second. In other words, the momentum would be conserved. Let's call that case one. And now if we make it a little trickier, let's do case two now. So in case two, let's say those two objects um, become linked. In other words, let's say this ball hits this ball and they both move forward. In other words, they don't move. Well, how would we do that? We've got mass. The first one has a momentum of zero. This one we said has a momentum of 1.2 kilograms meters per second. Now, after the collision, the mass of this one is going to be 0.2 times the velocity. And I'm just gonna call this V because the velocity is gonna be the same plus the mass of the other one, 0.2 times v, because we're saying the masses, or the velocities are gonna be the same. So 1.2 kilogram meters per second now equals 0.4 v, and so the velocity at this point would equal three meters per second. In other words, if this ball comes in and it has a mass of six meters per second, since their masses, or uh, a velocity of six meters per second, since their masses are exactly the same, it's gonna leave with a velocity roughly half that, or of about three meters per second. And so that's how you do momentum problems if you have two objects. Now, another thing that I failed to mention before that's really important is that momentum is a vector. And so to solve momentum problems, the, the other thing that you wanna have is a direction as well. And so most of the problems I've done before are just linear. Um, but if we're breaking, so this is a pool ball, let's say we have the cue ball here and we break the balls, there's gonna be a lot of different vectors of velocities that are created by that. And so the sum of all of those velocities is going to equal the sum of that first uh, momentum of that, of that first cue ball. And so momentum is conserved, but men momentum is also relative. And now we get a little bit deep, but it's not that deep. And so let's say you're this person right here. Let's say you're person A and you're watching a object come by. Let's say this is an elevator and it has an apple in it. And the elevator and the apple are both moving at a constant velocity. Well, when you look at that object, it's gonna have a certain momentum that we could calculate. So let's say the apple has a mass of 0.2 kilograms and it's going at a, at a speed of, or a velocity of 20 meters per second. Then we can figure out exactly what the momentum of that object is. But let's say we put you inside, and we sometimes refer to this as Einstein's elevator. Let's say we put you inside, and now that elevator is still moving at a constant velocity, but your reference has changed. And so when you look at this object, 
it's not moving, it's moving with you. And so we would say that its momentum now is zero. And the reason why is that we've shifted your time or your reference point uh, where you're observing it from. And so does it have a momentum here when you're watching it? Yeah. Does it have no momentum here when you're watching it when you're in the elevator? Yeah. And so that's relativity or that's a little bit of relativity. Uh, and so I hope that's helpful.